Ben. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the August 16th, the uh, magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that. It's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. Go ahead, send me an email. Send it early. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our tiger's den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Les Show. All this is trading lower with the exception of the Dow Transports. They're up 10 points, trading out at 14,937. The Dow's off 10 itself. The S&P's down 9. NASDAQ 100, 104. Russell's off 13. Semi's down 29. You've got gold trading out at 1788. That's up $9.80. Silver's up, um, that's basically flat, trading at 2378. Lights recruit down 90 cents. 6755 is the print. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, intuitive surgical, 11 bucks. Dexcom, 11 bucks. Charter communication, about 10. Inspire Medical, 9. Parker Hannafin up about 8 or 2.5%. To the downside, Booking Holdings off 89 bucks, 4%. Mercado Libre, 3%. 59 bucks. Amazon, 46 bucks, 1.5%. BioNTech, uh, 44 or 11%. So certainly we have things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So let's do this. Let's take a, a peek around the markets. There is some new information, valuable information for each of us, though that valuable information with regard to the equity futures contracts coming from their TAS market profile. So what do we know? We know that the ES Mini, your left-hand panel out there, is attempting to form a brand new bullish structured profile. So if price does head lower, you would expect and anticipate price to find support in the 4407 to 4421 level. If price closes above 44.63, well, then it's back off to the races. Now, this market profile will not be completed or confirmed, I should say, until this evening, 6.01 to be exact. So, but it's it's this has been solid. When I say solid, this profile formed just past six o'clock last night, and it has remained uh, steady. Eddie, steady Eddie out here. So I'm thinking that this profile is going to hold. The NQ. Today, we've seen it move all the way from basically the high to the low. So it's just in your consolidation, it's a bear structured profile. A close below 14,919, which suggests lower price, but that's not where we're at right now. The Dow, the YM, uh, this profile has changed numerous times. It now, this morning, as an example, at about uh, 8.30 this morning, it was a bearish structured daily profile. It has now turned into a bullish structured daily profile. Support would be between 34,837 and 34,922, resistance at 35,519. The Russell 2000 has not generated a new profile. Price has just been consolidating between it, the bottom at 2136, and the top at 2283, although neither of those have really been hit for a couple of weeks out here. So just a consolidation sideways inside the Russell 2000. So there are your new profiles. And they'll be very helpful. They'll be very helpful to anybody who's trying to take a short side where or or anybody trying to take the long side out there. What else do we know? If we take a look at the ES Mini as an example, we know that the only profile that's holding it back from continuing its move up to 4567 is this daily time frame. 
So if you're asking me what's the upside potential, well, the upside potential is a close above the top of that profile, again, 44.63, in which case we would then say price is likely targeting 45.67. That is coming from the monthly time frame chart, and that is the 2020 swing points, the high and low out there, and that would be the expansion of those. If we take a look at the NQ, same type of scenario, although the NQ has two profiles that are resistance that it needs to clear. The daily, which is priced at, sorry about that, 15,136. And the weekly, which is at 15,119. Uh, no, that's wrong. 15,172. Jeez, good Lord, Steve-O. So really 15,172, I'd have to say, is a real key mark out there because a close above that is going to suggest to move up to 16,488. Couldn't bust them down which would have tried to do this morning, maybe it's going to go try to bust them up. And the Dow here, again, the only profile right now that's a resistance level is the new daily profile that's attempting to form. And again, that resistance level being 35,519 support down at that 34,837 level. So that's what's going on in the equity markets. Well, there's one more thing I suppose we should take a look at. That's that spot volatility. X. What we can see here, if you look at the bottom left-hand panel, what you'll notice is price tagged. The 50 day exponential moving average, which is currently printed at 1749. The high of the day has been uh, high was 1771. It's tested and it's rejected. That's bullish for the ES mini. If at day's end, the spot follow to the next close above the 50 day exponential moving average, then what you and I would anticipate is a move back to that support level. Assuming again that the profile holds. That would be between 4407 and 4421. Okay, what else we want to look at? You know, with regard to the general markets, that's pretty much uh, where we need to be. Let's go take a look at our first question that has come in. The first question coming in from Alex. And Alex writes in, he says, hey, Steve, please show a buy price for Amazon. Absolutely. So let's take a look at Amazon AMZN as a ticker symbol. What we know about Amazon, it's in an A to B equals CD to the downside, Alex. So not until we see some type of bullish reversal candle on a daily basis will Amazon generate a buy signal. It's made the 1 to 1 1.6 when 8, A to B equals CD. That price projection, 32.68. It's trading right now at 32.47. That says price is likely headed to the 1 to 2 A to B equals CD in the 31.64 level. Price is below the bottom of the weekly profile as well. If we pull over Amazon's other charts, see if there's any other signals out here. And on the daily basis, we can see that price has made its way back to its TD9 breakout level. That's 32.18. So, Alex, there's a possibility that this is where a bottom will be formed. If that is the case, you will see some type of bullish reversal candle. Without that... Price just simply pulled back to its first breakout level. If price were to close below 32.18, it doesn't have to be today, then price would go target the next breakout level, and that's at 30.62. So there's potential, but not enough potential to go ahead and take that trade. If we saw some type of signal on a 30-minute basis, and I have the 30-minute chart up on our screen, and that kind of signal would be a close above 33.37, then we'd say, okay, maybe the bottom has been made, but we don't have that signal. And without that signal, Amazon may continue to head lower. So be on the lookout for a bullish reversal candle. And if you don't see one at price below 32.18, look out for 30.62. Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow down 10. S&P's off up 10 as well. And let's go to our next question. Our next question coming from Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector's question is about Newmont Mining. NEM is a ticker symbol. And a specific question uh, on Friday, uh, I drew in an A to B equals CD pattern. It's, uh, it's one that is showing right now. And uh, Hector's question, so in the case of this A to B equals CD, both Hector and I chose the same A point. That is the high for May 19th. I then chose for my B point, the uh, move down into June 29th. Hector's question is, why did I use that versus Hector used the swing point from July 23rd? So let me try to uh, explain that the best that I possibly can. And the reason that I preface it like that is because the A to B equals CD pattern, for the most part, is a very subjective pattern. And so both A to B equals CDs in other words, whether I use, now explain the reason why I did, but whether one uses the swing point from June 29th, that would be correct. Just likewise, you could also use that swing point here from July 23rd. That too would be correct. Which one is more correct? I don't know the answer to that. First of all, I don't know. And I did also say um, on Friday, Hector, I don't know if you caught this. This doesn't look like an A to B equals CD pattern that's going to complete. Although it's drawn in here and it can. And I'll explain the reason why as well on that. But the reason, so what I'm looking for here, and when we're in, in in the case of the A to B equals CD pattern, we're always using more information as we get if we, if we as we get more information. If the pattern changes, we go in there and and redraw it. Well, the initial pattern out here, Hector, if we were drawn in, I think you would agree with me that the B point would have been June 29th. Forget about this uh, data over here, you know, because we hadn't gotten, let's say, to July 23rd. In other words, if the chart was looking like this, you would have chosen the same A to B and B to C and C to D swing points out here. Now, in this case here, when we see this retracement found resistance really at the top of that profile, July 14th. So that's a reason why I just stick with this as the A to B equals CD. But in either case, so yours might have, yours would have a lower one-to-one -one price projection of $51. On Friday, I said, I don't think that uh, Newmont Mining is going to fulfill this A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the reason that I said that, my, my thoughts on that might change a little bit today, but first let's take a look at why did I say that on Friday? 
And the reason I said that on Friday is because what Newmont Mining still has is a confirmed Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. It did that when it generated this bull sash candle that was on August 11th. Because that was the bullish reversal candle. It's going to be the low of the pattern. This is a two-candle pattern, a bull sash. And that says that the low of the prior day, August 10th, that low is really your support level. That price would have to close below to negate the pattern. So Newmont Mining has a confirmed bottom in it. That low that would need to pierce, not pierce, but close below 57.96. So... It's got a valid bottom pattern here. What it has not been able to do, and I was tempted to take a long position in Newmont Mining this morning. I was thought about sending that out for subscribers. Price is inside a bullish structured profile, but what price has been unable to do has been unable to close above its red oscillator and change line. So it hasn't, even though we've gotten the bullish signal, it's not as if the uh, bulls have uh, really stepped up their game. In fact, they have not stepped up their game. So is this a bottom? It may be. Is it going to go on and make that A to B equal CD to the downside? Well, if it closed below that uh, low out here from the trading day of August 10th, then I would say, Hector, more likely than not, okay, then that pattern is back in play. But right now, you've got a valid bottoming pattern. It just has been able to prove itself to you. That's on the daily time frame. The weekly, as we take a look and look for a bottom here, well, the answer is, hey, guess what? You have a TD nine count bottom. Of course, that says that last week's low is a key low. If price closes below that, that says a further move lower than maybe that A to B equals CD pattern. But on Newmont Mining, both on a weekly and on a daily basis, we've got a valid bottom. So then, Steve, why didn't you take the long trade? Well, the interesting thing was is as gold was beginning to move higher this morning, when I say move higher, like by about five bucks or so, but off of the lows, there was a little TD9 count bottom that formed earlier, uh, the mining equities didn't really move much and that always makes me say hmm something to think about now what you should do at home and i'm just trying to find the chart here and we'll see if we can do the same thing and that would be what this uh chart yeah okay so this chart here which is this side. so we've got the gdx on the right side You've got gold on the uh, left side out here. You can see how gold has had a nice rally, right? I, I mean, uh, after that uh, big uh, move lower on August 19th, last Sunday, uh, it's just been uh, nothing but a nice big rally to the upside. We cannot say the same thing about the GDX. If I go back, so that's going to be see, one, two, three, four, five, six, so maybe seven. I'm going to get to the rate of change out here. And well, it's, either se it's either six or seven. I'm going to go ahead and put in seven days. So if you give me just a moment to to do that, let's get this um, rate of change out here. Uh, blank, what the heck? So I upgraded this software over the weekend, really it was on Friday. And uh, there are some tools that just aren't, oh, three days. Okay, so I want to go for seven out here. So let's get that to seven. And then let me come over here and get to the GDX. And so on the GDX, we've also got seven-day rate of change. Now, the reason that we're taking a look at the rate of change is in a bull market for the mining equities, the rate of change will be two to three times the rate of change in gold. The rate of change in gold right now over the last seven sessions, that can't be right. It must be six sessions. Uh, is it, right now my computer system says minus 1.12, um, and on the GDX it's minus five. So it's it's the exact opposite. So yeah. So the reason that I didn't take that trade this morning, Hector, is because the mining equities have not proven itself to us, and I really have to go by. I I, I know that I, I did a study a long time ago, and. Um, and I, I, I couldn't find it. I looked, I looked for it over the weekend. But go back and do the study as well for yourself. For those of you that are taking a look at the mining sector, go back and see how often do the mining stocks take off when their rate of change is less than the rate of change of Goldilocks. I believe that the answer you're going to find is not very often out there. So that can change, but it hasn't changed as we speak right now. So again, back to the A to B equals CD pattern out here. Neither of us are wrong. It is a subjective pattern. I like this pattern out here because it was the original one, and there was no reason to really change that, Hector.
And look, there's multiple A to B equals CD patterns. But right now, as long as Newmont Mining can hold this bottom here at the uh, 58, 51 level, the bottom of its profile, it's got the potential out there. It's certainly given us the bottoming signal. The caution sign is really coming from Goldilocks in its rate of change versus that for the mining equity. So, Hector, I hope that that helps you out. But if not, please write me back and because uh, I'd like you to be able to uh, at least get the thought process that uh, Stevie is looking at when I'm taking a look at drawing the A to B equals CD pattern. Steve Rhodes with TFNN Gifts called 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. We'll be right back. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. At Dow's down five, S&P's off uh, seven. Uh, let's stick with uh, gold here for a few moments. Let's go uh, switch over to my eight-panel chart out here and get a feel for what's going on intraday and as well as the daily time frame. So here as we take a look at gold, gold has a, a TD9 count top for its monthly time frame. 
You can see that out there. For its weekly time frame, it's got a TD9 count top. It's got a TD9 count bottom. And it's had an, a buy the D point last week. It did generate a bullish hammer candle. So gold has a, uh, it should at least target its oscillator and change line. That's at 1870 cents. That's what the weekly chart shows. The daily chart, let me expand this out. Although the A to B equals CD pattern is not drawn in here, um, you can visually see it. You did get to wave number seven, that's letter G. Price is above the oscillator and change line out here, and that says that that price should continue to move higher. Now, not shown on this chart is the uh, daily profile. And that daily profile, the bottom, in this profile form below price, that's typically a bearish signal. If it's going to be bearish, then price is going to find resistance at one of three areas. 1786.30, price at 1787.00. 1802 and 181770. Those are the, oh shoot, I gave you the wrong levels. My apology. Hold on a minute here. Let me give those to you again. 1788.50, price is trading at 1789. 1804, not like this is going to make a huge difference in your world. And then 182010, but I do want to give you the correct numbers out there. If you close above one, typically you'll go to the next uh, level. And those are the three different TAS market profiles bottom, center, and then top. So that's the daily time frame chart out here. If we look at intraday, what's going on, a 30-minute time frame chart, there's a Rhodes momentum indicator top. It was generated with this nice little dark cloud cover at 1130 this morning. That says if gold's going to be on its merry way, a close above 1791.30 would be that signal. So if you get above 1791.30, odds favor gold will make a move to 1804. You might say, well, gee, Steve, that's not a ton of money. I know, but I want to be able to give you where price would likely go to next. As far as support is concerned, in the case of Goldilocks, the Rhodes momentum indicator signal, price could pull all the way back to 1776.90. I don't have a signal that suggests that that's what it's going to do, but that's what it could do. And that's what it could do if we were to see a close below, I'd say, about 1787.70. And you're only at 1789.20, so it's just a couple bucks away. As we look at the other time frames out here, if we look for tops, the five hour time frame chart is now in bar number eight of a TD nine count. It says if gold is going to form some type of top on the five hour chart, it's going to happen by about uh, four o'clock uh, today. Um, as the five hour chart bars come to a end out there. So I would say that overnight you could see some type of pullback or retracement will be normal inside of uh, Goldilocks. At least that's what's coming from the five hour time frame. A chart out here and not that gold necessarily needs to get any higher it's going to have bar number eight so it can then with that with that roads momentum indicator top on the 30 minute time frame you can see there's one on the 60 minute as well uh the continued move higher in gold is likely done for the day at least as we speak right now as long as we're over here take a look at gold we probably should go take a look at what's going on in the currency pairs we don't do that often enough let's do that as long as we're over here on our eight paneled screen of course, now we're down to a, a two, four, six, seven panel screen out here. But these are the currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index with the euro over on the left hand side. Next to that, the yen. Next to that, the pound and the Canadian dollar, the Swedish Corona and the uh, Swiss franc out here. But it's the U.S. dollar index. It's one on the very right hand side. You see that uh, price stalled up at the top and generated a second Rhodes momentum indicator top out here. Although if you caught the uh, the one o'clock update, what you know is that the big move lower inside of the U.S. dollar index on Friday, but that big move lower on Friday was nothing more than a test of support or close to support. Support is actually 92.41. The actual low that took place on Friday was 92.47. Well, you got to love that. And as long as price holds that, the U.S. dollar index may just simply trade sideways. It's traded in between support and resistance. Support we just provided to you, resistance, was the uh, top of that uh, uh, Rhodes momentum indicator top from about four days ago. Now, are we getting clues from, let's say, the euro as to what the U.S. dollar index wants to do? Not really a clear signal. It's the exact opposite of what we just looked at on the U.S. dollar index. With the exception being, I don't have a TAS market profile to go take a look at for you. But price did close above that red oscillator and change line. And if that's the case, uh, that, that's a signal that price could move higher out there. But if it's going to move higher, and here's where the real tell comes. You'll see a close in U.S. dollar index below 92.41.
So we don't really have to know what the euro is going to do or whether it's going to be able to do it. We just need to know when the signal that the euro is going to move higher is going that that it's likely going to move up to the 119 level. That would occur if we were to see the U.S. dollar index take out support, and that would be 9241. As far as where the U.S. dollar index would trade to, if it took out support, it would likely trade down to about the 92 dollar level. So that's what's going on with gold, U.S. dollar. As far as the other currency pairs out here, uh, if we look for anything that's uh, of significance, I don't really see anything to report on for you. So that's what's going on uh, with regard to the U.S. dollar index. Let me check, see if there's any requests out here. We've got a request uh, from Mark D. Mark D says, uh, if you'd be so kind, you're in meet, meet.cn. You know, Mark, I don't, uh, that's going to be a Canadian exchange stock. Let me just see here if uh, what comes up here for meet for me. And uh, the answer is nothing. And I, so I don't have access to the Canadian exchange. I just haven't paid for it. So I, I can't look up meet.cn. But if you've got something else that you'd like me to take a look at, more than happy to do that. Just go ahead and send a, um, um, in another request. There's also a request here to take a look at Apple. AAPL is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's go ahead and get that in here. And we can see that Apple right now on a daily basis is really trading into resistance. So when I say resistance, price is above the top of its bullish structure daily profile. 149.01 is the number. But all we have to do is go a little bit further over to the right. We can see that on a weekly basis, there's a bearish structured profile. It's at 150, even Stephen. That is where Apple needs to close above. You don't see the chart. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. I forgot to switch over. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Give me a moment to do that. Okay, here is the Apple chart. So again, on the daily side, on the very left hand, you see that price is trading above the top of that daily profile. But notice here, and let me just do this. Let me let me just get rid of this. We can always put that back in there. That's the expansion. So now you can clearly see the bearish structured weekly profile. So if Apple can close above 150, even Stephen, uh, by Friday, that will be uh, intermediate term uh, bullish and suggest that we had to higher price. Now, let me pull over my other charts. Give me a moment to get there and then get Apple. Well, actually, you know what? I've got it up on the daily and weekly. We must have looked at this on Friday. Let's take a look at the uh, the other chart here for Apple, the other set of charts for Apple or tools on a daily time frame. We get here. So on the daily time frame, um, nothing really here to add. On a weekly time frame, this is going to be the bar following bar number nine of a TD nine count. That's going to make this week's high really important inside of Apple because whatever that high is, if next week price begins trading above it, that's pretty much a signal that the markets are going to go ahead and move higher into October. Wouldn't that be nice to know in the middle of August? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, I think we uh, finished off uh, Apple again on the uh, just because we were going into the last piece of the break. And this is really going to be helpful for each of us to try to understand uh, what the market's real intentions are, because at this stage here, we know that the market is somewhat negated uh, the uh, unfavorable seasonal cycle. And what I mean by that is typically during the unfavorable seasonal cycle, we would have a high in that would typically last through about uh, the middle of October, and we don't have that. So the question is, um, instead of moving lower into October, are we going to go ahead and move higher into October? So how do we answer that? Well, we answer that by looking for clues and certainly stocks that are heavily weighted because they could be the ones that would provide us with a signal. So, for example, Apple is one of those charts because we know that there is now a valid TD9 count. And the reason is because price has overtaken bar number five on a weekly basis. And that high was the high of a buck fifty. We've gotten above that. We're trading above it right now. So that says whatever the high is this week in Apple, that will identify the key resistance threshold level of the TD9 count system. And if we were to see a close above that, that would then be a signal, at least to Stevie, that the markets are likely going to go ahead and move higher into October. Uh, so Apple is really a key chart for each of us to come take a look at uh, certainly next week. And of course, it's by the close of next week that we need to know. So we're really about a couple of weeks, but still it's a really important, uh, in my opinion, it is an important uh, chart, the weekly chart for Apple, for us to really pay attention to because that could be giving us that signal out there. Zip inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at uh, Microsoft, no, Monster, M-N-S-T. Monster Energy Drink, is that what that is? Monster Beverage Corp. So absolutely. So as we take a look at MNST, what do we know? We know that uh, Stevie's stalling here as I try to get that typed in on my other system. Okay, well, that was the first thing that we knew. The second thing that we know is that Monster Beverage is consolidating right now with inside its daily profile zip. So that's in between support at 96.66, resistance at 99.08. We know that price is above the top of the weekly and the monthly profile. So from a profile standpoint, no resistance there. Your resistance is at 9808. Let's pull over Monster Energy's white background charts and see what kind of signals out here that uh, Zip needs. Well, on Friday, well, that's the weekly chart. Let me come back. Let's go to the daily. Let me populate this here. And on the daily chart, Zip, all we've got is really an A to B equals CD pattern. Let's come back and take a look at that pattern out here and uh, see see where we're at and see if there's a confirmed A to B equals CD. We'll come back to those charts. I'm just going to expand out the uh, daily time frame. And the A point that I'm going to use here, I'm going to go ahead and just use this low from uh, July 9th. Uh, Hector, you could use this low from June 25th. 
Uh, we can come back here and do another A to B equals CD here from May 7. There's a number. I'm just going to use the most conservative one right now. So there's our A point, and our B point out here is going to be July 23rd, and our C point is going to be the low on August 5th. You can see the price has already made the one-to-one -one level. So that just says, hey, we want to be on the lookout for some type of bearish reversal candle. Now, I know somebody in the audience is saying, what do you mean, Steve-O? I see red-bodied candles. And that's absolutely true. But a red-bodied candle doesn't mean it's a bearish reversal signal. We're looking for Japanese uh, candlesticks out here, and we just don't have that. So there is no confirmed top. You have the completion of the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD, which has now led to, led to a consolidation uh, out here uh, within those profile levels. So that's what we see when I take a look at the daily time frame. Now let me come back to my other white background charts because I want to take a look at that to say, okay, maybe, if, maybe there is an A to B equals CD. It's completed. And, uh, and that's going to suggest a pullback to 97.05. Now, price still may pull back to 97.05. That is the oscillator and change line. But uh, MN MNST for the daily time frame continues to look bullish to me, Zip. Uh, so I hope that that helps you out. The weekly chart for Monster Energy last week generated a Rhodes Mintum indicator top as a result of its bearish shooting star candle. However, what we do see is price is above its oscillator and change line. So its signal is either neutral to bullish versus bearish out there. So even with that, it still looks bullish to Stevie. And on a monthly time frame out here, I don't have anything right now that suggests uh, to uh, jettison your position. If you are in that position, uh, right now it's just a sideways consolidation, but things still look pretty bullish for Monster Energy. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Let's go to our first caller. That's Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing great, Steve. It's so nice to have you back, and you sound like you're doing well. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm hanging in there, absolutely hanging in there, and, 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 and good to be back. Um, so thank you. And uh, Gilead Sciences, G-I-L-D, is, I believe, what you've called about. Is that correct? Or Yeah, I called. I think it might have been the first day you were back, but there was some issue with the audio. You can't really take calls. Yes. And so... Um, I want to focus, of course, more on the longer term because I'm not day trading this as, as a longer term investment. And I, I believe there was something on, I can't recall if it was the weekly or the monthly, but I, I think it's above one area. The next level that you kind of talked about was around 78. And I guess my question would be if it were to get above that, then is there something then you know, past that that I have to watch or what other areas do you have that might potentially be an issue? And I think after today is day number four on the daily, and uh, maybe you can get into the weekly count, things like that. Because sure, absolutely. So uh, just for, first with regard to the weekly, uh, there's an A to B equals CD pattern that is in play out here. I'm just simply drawing that in. And the one-to-one -one price projection level for the weekly chart would be 74.19. And the one to point one to one point two seven two is 77.67. So that's on the weekly chart. I think the level, Brent, that you and I might have been looking at uh, that we wanted to see price clear was coming from the monthly time frame, and that level was 70.21. And 70.21 is the top of the profile. Price is above daily, weekly, and monthly profile level. So price is above resistance there. So before I pull over the white background charts, is there anything that you need from these charts here that we haven't already discussed? No, that was important to me. To, you know, I was really having a lot of trouble with the 70 level. It, there was always sellers there, and it yes. was able to get above and close above that last week, and now it's done that for a few days you know, in a row. So that's important to me. Now we'll just see how it handles the next levels above that. Yeah, no, Perfect. Yeah, yeah, I guess go to the other chart. Yeah, chart. yep, yep. So here on the daily, uh, bar number four of a TD9 count. So no TD9 count pattern or no other pattern that I see here to be concerned with. So that's positive. On a weekly basis out here, boy, it just sure looks strong, super strong. And when I say super strong, Brent, 78.94 will become its next price target to the upside. Granted, we already looked at A to B equals CD patterns, and those are still uh, applicable. But short of the A to B equals CD pattern, the TD9 breakdown level is at 78.94. And there's not anything on the weekly chart to suggest that that's not what its eventual outcome is. Again, it's a weekly chart, so I'm not saying that happens tomorrow. Uh, but that's a positive. And then on the monthly chart... Uh, so this is kind of interesting. This is going to be month number eight of a TD9 count. But you and I know that that 
could occur a TD9 count on the bar following nine or bar nine. So it still could be a couple of months away. Hey, Brent, we're going to a hard break here. Just hang on through it uh, if you'd like, because I want to be able to give you whatever information and questions you have. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We're taking a look at Gillian Sciences, G-I-L-D. Hope you're right. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the, the chart here for Gilead Sciences with uh, Brenti in the Martinez, California. We we're taking a look at the monthly chart as we were going into that break out there. And Brent, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is going to be bar number eight or should be bar number eight on a monthly basis. But when I go back and I look at the chart patterns, uh, taking us back into 2006 time frame, I don't see any monthly charts where bar number eight identified the top or bottom of that pattern. So odds favor that this time would be similar in that you should get bar number nine and the bar following nine, I would say. So what additional information or what other questions maybe can I answer for you? No, that's great information. I appreciate it, Steve. I just, again, I mean, you know what my position is here yep. as far as it's been longer term hold. And, and uh, I think they did some acquisitions last year that were oncology-based acquisitions that you know, I'm hoping at some point will pay dividends and Sure. Yeah, I think technically it's acting okay. It's, it's doing better than it had for a little while here, and we'll see how that, if that continues. And 
And then as far as fundamentally, I think there's some things there that would you know, make sense to try to hang on to it if that's if it keeps acting good technically. Excellent. Right. Well, the chart the chart pattern. The chart patterns look good, great, and uh, kudos to you. And uh, Brent, always good to hear your voice, so thanks so much for calling, and we'll look forward to uh, speaking to you again soon, I hope. It was great talking to you, Steve, and I'm so happy to have you back and that you're doing well. Thank you. Thank Take you care. so much. Thank you Brent, again. you bet. Brent in Martinez, California. Real quickly here, we've got one request, and that request is to take a look at Pfizer. And that was actually for uh, Mark, who wanted, who was looking at the Canadian stock. Pfizer, trade above all profile levels out here, daily, weekly, monthly. So everything there looks strong. Mark, as I take a look at the daily, just looking for any kind of topping signal or anything. You do have wave number seven. That is letter G that is in play, bar number eight of a TD9 count. So Pfizer could top between today and Wednesday. That'd be a short-term top. That should take price back to about the 47 buck level. Uh, and that's on the daily time frame. Folks, stay tuned. Uh, you've got two more great hours up, and uh, I'll see you back here on uh, Terrific Tuesday. Have a marvelous Monday, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.